I'm Bob Duhamel, and we are going to continue our practice problems for AC circuits with inductors and capacitors in series. So let's take this problem off the board and throw in some new numbers. Everything will look the same, except, oh, what should we change? Let's change everything. Let's make this a nice, even 100 hertz. How much resistance should we have? How about, oh, how about 100 ohms? Inductance, how about 33 millihenries? And why not? 33 microfarads, a couple of standard numbers we should come across every once in a while. So there we have it, 100 hertz, 100 ohms, 33 millihenries, 33 microfarads. Let's calculate the impedance. So once again, we want to calculate the inductive reactance, which is going to be X sub L equals to pi FL. I'll keep writing these up just to pound them into your head so you never forget, which will be equal to 6.28, 2 pi is equal to 6.28, times the frequency, which is now 100, times 100, times our inductance, which is going to be 33 millihenries, so that's going to be 0 0.033 henries. So let's do the calculation. 6.28 times 100 times 0 0.033 equals, and we get an inductive reactance of 20.27. So an inductive reactance of 20.27 ohms. Now the capacitive reactance, again, is X sub C equals 1 over 2 pi FC, which equals 1 over 6.28 times, once again, frequency 100, times our capacitance, 33 microfarads. That's going to be 0 0.000033, so 0 0.00033. If you're having any trouble following that, I do have a video link below on these prefixes to help you practice getting these numbers right, but 33 microfarads will be 0 0.000, oh, I'm missing one, need another zero there, four zeros in a 33, glad I looked. So 0 0.000033 farads, let's do the calculation, 6.28 times 100 times 0 0.000040, zero 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 three three equals, don't care about that number, just going to take the reciprocal, and we got 48.25 ohms. So now we have our inductive reactants and our capacitive reactants. So now to calculate the impedance, now instead of having 30, we have 100 ohms. So 100 ohms of resistance, and we have 20.27 ohms of inductive reactants. So that's 100 ohms. Let's try to get close to about a fifth of that. So right about to there, let's say. So about 20.27 ohms of inductive reactants. And now we subtract our capacitive reactants, which is 48.25. So it's going to be about twice as much. How about to about there? So minus 48.25. 8.25 ohms, giving us a total of, here we go, 20.27 minus 48.25. So remember that our inductive reactance is by convention positive, our capacitive reactance by convention is negative. They're 180 degrees out of phase with each other, so that's why they subtract from each other and we got a total of negative 27.98. So since it's a negative number, that means our total reactance is capacitive. So we have basically a capacitive circuit. All of the inductive reactants has been canceled out, leaving us only with a little bit of capacitive reactants. What is the hypotenuse of the triangle? That will give us our impedance. So once again, the impedance is equal to the square root of our resistance squared plus our total reactance squared. That's going to be 100 squared plus 27.98 squared. Do the math. So 100 squared 
Yeah, store that away. 27.98. Add that to the square of the resistance. And I got a big number that I take the square root of, and I got 103.84 ohms. So find the inductive reactants, find the capacitive reactants, subtract the capacitive reactants from the inductive reactants, gives us that number, which gives us our triangle. And then we take the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of that triangle. So this particular circuit has 103.84 ohms of total impedance. The phase angle is, once again, it's going to be the arc tangent of x over r. So that's going to be 27.98 divided by 100. 27.98 divided by 100. We're using absolute numbers, forgetting the sign at this point. Gives us a number which we take the arc tangent of, and that gave me a phase angle of 15.63 degrees. So this circuit has a total impedance of 103.84 the hypotenuse of that triangle with a phase angle of minus 15.63 because it was mostly capacitive. So proper notation here, erase our clutter. So our total impedance, the hypotenuse of the triangle turned out to be 103.84. Yeah, just make it 103.8, don't need too many significant digits. With a phase angle of 15.63. And that phase angle is negative because we had more capacitive reactants than inductive reactants at that frequency. So there's our polar notation. And of course, rectangular notation is just the resistance plus or minus J and then the leftover reactants. So in this case, our leftover reactants made a right turn at the end. It was negative. So it's going to be minus J. So it's going to be 100 minus J 27.8. Nine, eight. Polar notation and rectangular notation for this particular circuit. Let's go ahead and make a change. What should we change? Last time all we did was change the frequency. Let's change the resistance. See what we come up with. Let's make the resistance uh, 50 ohms. This is going to be easy because we don't have to recalculate the reactances. We just have to recalculate the impedance. So here we go. Let's draw our triangle. We start out with 50 units horizontal. And once again, we go positive 20.27. So that's going to be a little less than half as long. So right about to maybe there-ish. Then we subtract 48.25. So that's going to be down to about there-ish. So plus 20.27. Then we subtract... 48.25, so we went up 20.7, subtracted 48.25, ended up with 20.27 minus 48.25 gives us again, oh yeah, 27.98 minus 27.98. So that turned out to be the same, but this number is shorter. So, so this turned out to be the same calculation. We added 20.27 subtracted 48.25, leaving us with negative 27.98. So our triangle looks similar, but once again, this is half the size. So let's find out what the impedance is there. So once again, the impedance is going to be r squared plus x squared, take the square root. So I take 50 and I square it, store it away. Then I take the 27.98, and I square that. I'm using absolute numbers here because it really doesn't matter. Negative 27.98 squared is the same as 27.98 squared, but I do add that to the square of the resistance. I get a number which I take the square root of, gives me 57.29 ohms, 
as the impedance or the hypotenuse of that triangle. So what's the phase angle? Once again, I take that number, divide it by that number. So that's going to be 27.98 divided by 50 equals some number I don't care about, but I do take the arc tangent of that. So once again, the phase angle equals the arc tangent of x over r. x divided by r, take the arc tangent, and I got a phase angle of 29.23 degrees. And negative, again, because I have more capacitive reactants than inductive reactants. So how do we notate this again? Get our clutter out of the way. We have a impedance of 57.29 ohms with a phase angle of 29.23 degrees, negative phase angle because it's more capacitive. And once again, rectangular notation is going to be 50, negative number, so it's minus J and the reactants 27.9. Eight. So there is that particular circuit. So let's do one more problem. Let's change the numbers around a little more. Get just a little more practice here. Once you're good at this, then you're ready to take that certification exam or whatever. Let's, oh, let's just mix everything up really good here. How about 300 hertz? And let's make this, oh, 75 ohms. Let's make this one 22 millihenries and let's make this one 22 microfarads. Don't want to get too far away where I get numbers that are so big or so small that kind of makes a useless diagram. We can always come up with numbers but I want to come up with some numbers that are easy to wrap our heads around. So let's uh, go ahead and do the calculations. Once again, let's find out what the inductive reactance is. X sub L equals two pi F L. So that's going to be 6.28 times what? 300 this time, times 22 millihenries, 0 0.022. So let's find out what that is. 6.28 times 300 times 0.022 equals, and I got 41.45 ohms of inductive reactants. Now the capacitive reactants, X sub C equals one over two pi F C, which equals one over 6.28 times 300 times 22 microfarads, 0.000022. So here we go, 6.28 times 300 times 0 0.000022 equals, I don't care about that number, I'm just going to take the reciprocal, so 1 over that number gives us 24.12 ohms. So once again, we make our triangle, there's 75 units, 75 ohms. And 41.45 ohms of inductive reactants. So that's about, let's see, 25, about maybe that high, would you say? Then we subtract 24.12. So, so that's going to be 41.45. Subtract 24.12. What do you think? About maybe to there. So our total is going to be 41.45 minus 24.12 equals giving us a total of 17.33. So yeah, kind of like right about there, 17.33 ohms. And it's positive because we had more inductive reactants than capacitive reactants. So we're ending up with a triangle that looks something like that. So there's our 75 ohms and 17.33 ohms of Reactants, it's a positive number, so it's inductive reactants left over. Okay, so there's our triangle. Let's calculate the impedance. Let's get rid of these numbers up here. The impedance is the hypotenuse, which is, once again, going to be square root of R squared plus X squared. So here we go. 75, square that, store it away. 17.33, 17.33, square that. 
add it to the resistance squared plus root oh, the annual gives me a number that I take the square root of and gave me 76.97. So our hypotenuse is 76.97 ohms. And what's our phase angle? Once again, we take our reactants, divide it by the resistance. So that's going to be 17.33 divided by 75. Take the arc tangent of that. So here we go. 17.33 divided by 75 equals gives us a number that we take the arc tangent of. And I got 13.01 degrees. Kind of hard to write in there. 13.01 degrees for the phase angle. And let's go ahead and write down those numbers in proper notation. So what do we have? Polar notation, 76.97 ohms with a phase angle of positive 13.01. And rectangular notation, resistance, 75 plus or minus j, well, it's a positive number here, so it's going to be plus j, that number 17.33. And so there's that one. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.